I mean, fuck it, dude. Currently driving to the plug's house with my mom. Rehab's just a scam. I do sniff the dedication. I cannot stop crying, guys. Bro, there's rats in my house. But I think that atheists are the dumbest people. The goddamn Herman Miller, baby. Dang. I'm coming, babe. I'm coming. <laughs> Hello everybody, it's me, Pickle, and I'm back with the Boss Man Jack. Terrible news. I regret to inform you guys that after Boss Man's hearing on the 14th, we still do not have our favorite crackhead free and at his parents' house breaking shit up and gambling all of his money away. This is fucking rigged. The judge is a rat. He can't keep getting away with this. This is so wrong. Not okay, dude. Dude, guys, are we okay? I'm not okay. Are you guys okay? Are we okay? Austin, are we okay? I am okay. Everyone that I love and that loves me and every good person in this world um, feels okay. And we are okay. And we're okay together. Okay. I think we're going to be okay. Now, this video isn't just about me telling you that everything's going to be okay and that we're going to have our crackhead soon back streaming for us. Our friends at the Kui Farms have once again provided us with a detailed report of what happened during this hearing. So shout out again to the legend, Lolcow Supreme for being on the ground again, reporting on Bossman Jack's hearing. And since some of you might be illiterate, I will read it for you. Let's begin. Austin had his court appearance this morning in General District Court. Even though all five charges were on the docket for this morning, the primary reason for the hearing was to review his bond violation slash bail violations. As these were dates sent from back in September when he was sent to rehab and subsequently kicked out. Austin's attorney, Brian Jones, was in attendance, with myself entering the courthouse just behind him. While waiting for the judge to enter, Jones had a brief conversation with the prosecutor, which was very brief. Jones. So about Austin. Prosecutor. No chance. It is obvious he was asking about if she'd support Bond or not. There was additional talk about getting pre-trial services on board, but that was a negative as well. Pre-trial services is who Austin likely was calling his PO, as you have to report to them for drug screens, etc. Which to remind you guys, he failed every single drug test that he took, right Austin? I got arrested in August, right? I got out and failed every single piss test they gave me for cocaine. Every one of them I failed. And he also skipped a bunch of them. Anyways, let's continue. Attorney Jones then left the courtroom just before the inmates were brought in. Austin was first through the door and he seemed a lot more alert, standing upright and not as desperate did. His goatee was grown in a little but still appears crackheadish. He gave a quick glance around the room not seeing his attorney or anyone else and promptly sat down. A few minutes later, Austin's father Scott, aka Rat Dad, and his mother Diane, aka Rat Mom, walked into the courtroom and sat down in the second row. Inmates are in a separate seating area with a chest high divider so they cannot readily see the general public area of the courtroom and thus Austin did not see them walk in. As Diane started speaking to Scott, Austin instantly stood up with a huge grin across his face and waved to his mom and dad and started to say something like hey. But this was instantly shut down by both the bailiff in the front of the courtroom by Austin and the one by the general public area. The bailiff by the public area warned Scott and Diane that Austin is to have no contact and if they tried, they would have to leave. I'm not sure if this is general practice or the officers were aware of a protective order since Austin is still in jail for two domestic violences as well. A couple of other inmates waved to people and did not get the same immediate treatment. Attorney Jones had a chat with the parents about the day's plan and again with Austin. This might be attorney, client, privileged, but it equated to wanting to get clarification on the evaluation from rehab and being kicked out to try to plead for bond. Do they kick me out today? Never mind, I didn't say that. When Austin was called up, he actually greeted the judge more appropriately with a Good morning, your honor. And we are on to the main event. I don't know if this was out of instinct, but Scott tried to also go to the stand to be besides Austin, but was immediately physically blocked by the bailiff and told to return to his seat. I had never seen such a thing. And Scott was allowed to stand with Austin last time, so I'm thinking it's a protective order of no contact in place. The judge got down to business, only addressing the bond bail violations. The judge started out by saying, We sent him to treatment and he was kicked out. Obviously Austin has a drug problem. He was kicked out. So what do you suggest? Attorney Jones tried to make a case that the letter slash report was unclear that Austin was kicked out for positive drug screens and that he wanted to get with the rehab to confirm it if it was because any of the screens had failed. The judge said, but he didn't finish treatment. 
Jones then tried to rebuke, saying Austin was also suffering from mental health issues, but was on medications and stable now. The judge then restated, he might, but he also has a drug problem. Jones then tried to counter with, he's only in for a possession charge, trying to downplay the drug problem. The judge then asked the prosecutor for the Commonwealth's stance. The prosecutor then outlined how Austin was non-compliant with pretrial services, meaning though he did not state failed or missed tests for the bond. Then he was kicked out of the court, ordered rehab, revoking the second bond. And while out, it picked up another three charges to include eluding and domestic violence. So if you guys remember, he he caught a eluding police charge as well as resisting arrest. Seems Mr. Austin tried to run away from the cops because he knew what was coming. So it is at this point the judge had heard enough and in a very pissed off tone concluded, What precedent does it set if I send someone to treatment and they get kicked out? and I let them go home to their parents and denied bond. The judge then said the preliminary hearing for the drug possession charge itself for the next available date of the court officer, who was not in court for this hearing, November 21st. No other discussion of the eluding and resisting charges at this point. They might be their own trials with that officer. And Lolka Supreme finishes his report stating, Austin is still being held without bond. So there you go folks, not looking good for Austin. Now the next hearing are set for November 21st, so exactly a week after this hearing that he had on the 14th. Obviously me and all the other rats are just hanging on the edges of our seats to know what is then going to happen on the 21st. Will he finally maybe get bond again? We're going to have to wait and find out. But further down the thread, Lolka Supreme also shares his thoughts on this matter, providing us with a small glimmer of hope, as he puts it. I quote, there is a glimmer of hope for the preliminary hearing next week. With the willingness for Bond being rejected a deal, any deal no matter how bad, may be tempting for Austin due to his intolerance for being in jail. If not, then the judge will confirm the felony and send it over to circuit court. Not sure if there is another opportunity of Bond then, but my crude unofficial calculations by the 21st, Austin will have spent 38 days in jail for a drug possession. Austin's jail time breakdown. An official, I do not know how this jurisdiction counts on the calendar day or the 24-hour day. Initial arrest for domestic violence and drug possession, July 2nd to July 12th, 10 days. Arrest on warrant, arrest on warrant for bond violation, September 19th to September 24th, 6 days. Arrest on warrant for bond violation, domestic violence, October 27th to today, today being the 14th, 19 days. Total served as of the 14th, 35 days. Total served as the next hearing November 21st, 42 days. Volka Supreme also goes on to state that Usually there's some compassion for someone to get treatment as an alternative to jail in a plea deal. A plea deal here could benefit both parties, but it will favor the prosecution more at this point. The deal? Plead guilty right now to a misdemeanor possession charge, drop the felony charge, you do 30 days jail. The benefits for Austin being, he's already done 30 days time served. The offer is 60 days jail, he's already halfway through. Since he isn't being offered bond anymore, he's stuck in jail until the case ends. Felony case could go until February or longer. Austin also avoids a second felony conviction and the jail time it contains. The benefits for the state, easy conviction, and ends what has been a four month trial already. Prees up the sheriff's witnesses, the prosecutor, the clerk, and the rat judge for this for now. And the judge did this for now. Can still be tough on crime as Austin was a first time drug offender. So I, I really hope that what Lolcow Supreme is saying turns out to be what happens. I have voiced my opinion that Austin, even being a piece of shit that he is, we still want him to be free, in preference not abusing his family and not scamming and stealing money from people. We want him in front of his camera, doing his gambling thing, making us all laugh, and hopefully not doing too many drugs in the process. So if there's any doubt to any of you that might think that, oh, I'm just a hater and I just want his downfall, quite the contrary. An actual downfall for boss is if he gets sent years in prison. I do not want that. <laughs> not just for the obvious reason that I'm a accountant on him and that means money in my pockets, but also because uh, I actually don't wish his downfall. Some people do, don't get me wrong. In in, in the rat community, there there's a spectrum. There's you, you go from the total haters, want his downfall, want to see him in prison forever, all the way to the borderline lovers of boss man. So every rat is unique. We, each and every one of us has our one way of being a rat, which is why I love you guys and this community. And speaking of, don't forget to join my Discord. We talk all things boss men in there, but not just. We can also talk about other lol cows, even other topics. So 
feel free. So last but not least, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments or reach out on the Discord server. What do you think is going to happen? What are your predictions? What have happens as far as boss main content? As I've stated previously, I will be revisiting old content. Priority being Bossman and Yasuo Beef. They had a really funny call on stream that I want to show to you guys. And outside of Bossman content, I will be continuing the videos on Goober. They've been well received. Thank you. I, I'm happy that you guys are enjoying them. Once I have time, I have other gambling addicts and other lol cows that I want to talk to you guys about. Okay, now, thank you everyone for the support. Thank you for the subs, the likes, the comments. They matter. You matter. We all matter. And we're going to be okay. Awesome. Any parting words? I cannot believe I just lost all that, dude. I want to fucking... Dude, I swear to fucking God, dude. Wow. Thank you, Austin. Now, this has been Pickle Time. See ya.